You see that? That's sick. And then you got the little map on there, let you know, 11, 10, 9, 8, you know, you're getting closer to certain places. What the fuck, Ammo? You nearly got us killed in that shit hole. Now, in terms of the graphics, you see this glitch, right? It's annoying. And then also, when you load the level up, just like in certain parts of Gears, like the textures take a good three, four seconds to load up. So that right there is a flaw in the game too when it comes to graphics. The overall, the whole package of this game is incredible. And there, but there is some tweaking that needs to be done to make this game, you know, better. So overall, I give this game, I gave this game an eight out of ten. And the reason why is because the the action, the dialogue, everything in this game, the story, how it feels to play, it's all incredible. But this glitch that you're seeing right now is inexcusable. And the cover system, although it's good, it should have been so much better. Considering this is a Unreal Engine that they are familiar with, they should have made it exactly like Gear so it could be smoother. Because it actually hurts the gameplay because the cover system isn't as smooth as it should be. And also... There's some graphical um, problems besides the glitches. There's also some loading issues that um, happen in the game as well. This right here is where you can shop. So you can purchase weapons and stuff like that. So these are unavailable right here. But I only got like $6,000. So I could, you know, buy something. I could buy this. Now, check, check, check this out in terms of the sound of the game. How I was telling you guys before. Look at this. Listen to the sound. You hear that? You don't even hear it because the silencer is there and it sounds so smooth. Like how a silencer is supposed to sound. Uh. Got him up. Boom. Shot him up. We can climb up there. Alright, so that's a bit that's that's good enough showing you guys right now so you know what the game is like. The game is great. This is definitely a purchase, man. Go buy this game, it's that hot. And if you're a 50 cent fan, make sure you buy it like today. And if you can't and if you don't got sixty dollars to spare, then buy it for thirty dollars because you can get it used if you want. Alright, so other than that, one love, God bless. And this was 50 Cent Blood in the Sand, baby. Hey. Back to the show. Yeah, yeah, what up, y'all? It's your man Blacksmith. Game development ground zero. And I got some, some sick news for y'all. For all y'all who was waiting for Microsoft to, to, to make the first move, you know what I mean? To bring their Zoom HD up to light, you know. You guys, I'm sure you guys know Microsoft has just, you know, released the Zoom HD this week. And they actually have put out uh, an update, a software package update for X and A that has Zoom compati compatible components to it. That's right. So Microsoft is taking the first step to allow people, users, up and coming game developers to develop games for the Zoom HD. So if you guys have XNA 3.1, or you're interested in game development, download XNA 3.1, then download the Zoom compatibility software update, and you guys will be well on your way to making games for the Zoom. You know what I mean? So this week on Game Development Ground Zero, we gonna have a sick episode of with my man Daniel Floyd. That, it doesn't really have a name, so I got a little stuck there. But it's the next episode with Daniel Floyd, and um, it's pretty much sex and games. You know what I mean? What role sex and games play, and how we can actually bring it out further in the game industry. Because we all mature players, most of us anyway. And you know, there's sex in movies. Why they can't be sex in games? You know, it, it actually culminates a love story and and. and and brings emotion into the game, into the game more than it would if if, if it was missing. 
you know, a lot of games that have had sex in games, like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and my uh, Mass Effect, they, they've gone on to, even though Mass Effect wasn't really explicit, you know, and Hot Coffee got a lot of, you know, people in the uproar, but it, it's basically the forward motion of game development. So check out the video. Um, it's gonna help y'all. I'm putting these videos out to help y'all get more accustomed to, you know, game development terminology, and also give y'all, you know, those of y'all who not sure you still on the fence or whether you want to make games. You know, it's, it's actually gonna uh, elevate you guys mentally. So check it out. New Daniel Floyd episode. Game development ground zero. You mean blacksmith? Hey, how's it going? Once again, my name is This, and I'm here to talk to you about these. And today, we're going to talk about their shaky association with this. I know we're not all gamers here, but just try to humor me for a few minutes, and I'll try to make this as tolerable as possible. Look, I'm drawing pictures. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the history between these two, shall we? Sex has actually had a presence in video games for almost as long as they've existed. Sex was even there in the arcades of the 70s, whether it was as subtle as the phallic joystick, or as blatant as games like Gotcha and Boonga Boonga. I cannot even imagine the public reaction these games would get today. Oof. Then in the 80s, we got our first taste of real controversy, a dish we'd be enjoying for years to come. In 1983, a terrible game called Custer's Revenge was released for the Atari, featuring a crudely rendered General Custer dodging arrows. For surviving the onslaught, he was rewarded with a captive Native American woman to rape, and points for doing so. I'm sure you can imagine how well that went over. Uh, also new in the 80s were MUDs, online text-based games from the day when real nerds roamed the internet. For people in the audience younger than 25, this is what Second Life looked like back in the day. These games might actually have been the birthplace of cybersex, and it's good to see that tradition is alive and well in its grandchildren. Good, and just a little depressing sometimes. Sex games continued to pop up here and there for almost every game system, but this trend hit a small roadblock in 1985, the year Nintendo released their first home console. Determined to maintain the integrity of their image, Nintendo prohibited games with sexual content for being released on the NES. From this point forward, consoles and mainstream games in general would remain mostly free of explicit sexual content. The PC, however, would continue to offer plenty of sex-themed games throughout the years. There's still a pretty healthy market for adult games on the PC even today, from low-budget Flash games to the Japanese and German adult game markets. Then came the 90s, which gave rise to the sexy video game character. Yep, good old Lara, probably gaming's biggest sex symbol. She and others, like Duke Nukem, inspired over a decade of hypersexualized character design in games. And then there was, um, yeah, you know what, forget it, this is boring, let's just move on ahead. Anyway, since then we've had a hot coffee fiasco, mass confusion, a really stupid easter egg, and years of cheap sex appeal. As you can see, games have had a few problems over the years where sex is concerned. For as long as sex has existed in games, this is pretty much what it's looked like. Exploitive at worst and superficial at best. We've had explicit adult games, adolescent fantasy, and shallow sex appeal in general. Now, not all of you may be gamers, which is fine. But I and many video game fans like me see games as a new artistic medium in its infancy. We've seen games come a long way as a narrative medium, and we're excited to see our games develop as a unique venue for storytelling the way films and novels have. But games aren't quite there yet, and I believe this is one of the weaknesses holding games back. It's as though the video game, as a medium, has not come to terms with sex. Game designer James Portnow puts it this way. How can you have an art that denies sexuality? We lose everything from American Beauty to The Graduate, from Elvis to Nirvana, from Picasso to De... 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 Ga, de... Ga, de Ga, this guy. The key is to recognize that exploring sexuality is a small but essential part of our development as an art form. Many of humanity's most profound insights into our nature and the nature of the world have stemmed from an exploration of that strange mix of the most noble and the most primal sexuality. So what's holding video games back? The first reason is the most obvious. In case you haven't noticed, video games have a bit of an image problem right now. Public misconceptions have put a lot of pressure on video games. For one thing, a large segment of the population still perceives games as toys for children. And while this might have been kind of true back at certain points in time, it... Uh, well, oh no, I take it back. I guess there's never been a point in time where video games were made exclusively for young children. And they certainly aren't now. But this stigma remains deeply ingrained in the public consciousness today. So when this public catches wind of mature content being sold to their children, the controversy pot starts to boil. This stigma has helped to turn games into this generation's favorite whipping boy. If kids act up, get fat, or go on a shooting spree, you can bet games are going to be getting a few dirty looks. And it doesn't really help that gamers have such a deep-rooted negative stereotype to begin with. I mean, when you hear the phrase gamer or video game fan, what do you picture? Probably this? Maybe a little bit of this guy? I mean, at best, him. Nerds, shut-ins, man-children. I'm not saying these stereotypes are entirely untrue, but they're a bit less painfully accurate than they used to be but this image still colors the public perception of gaming as an immature hobby. Of course, to some extent, a lot of the fault for the stunting of sex in games lies in the trends set by game makers themselves. 
I mean, the history of sex in video games isn't exactly one of restraint or maturity. Decades of hypersexualized heroes, adolescent pan-